Low Math. Today we're going to be working on number 36 on the General Curriculum Low Math subtest. Um, when I approach a problem like 36, I right away notice the three different parts of the problem. The top, the high, middle, and lower sections. And what sticks out in this one is the high one. It has this very visual diagram, so I'm thinking geometry, and a lot of different things are coming to my head as I look at this. So um, um, it could involve volume, could involve area, could involve a lot of things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the question and see if the question gives me any clues on where to start. A gift box has dimensions X by Y by Z. The decorative ribbon is wrapped across the diagonals of the box as shown above. Which of the following expressions represents the approximate total length of the ribbon? Okay, that's very important. I'm looking at this. I'm, the, key infer, the key pieces to this right here, I think, are the clues. Is that I'm going to be looking at the diagonals of this box. And I'm going to be trying to find out the total length of that ribbon, which is, lies on the diagonals. That is really important that you see that piece. We're dealing with the measurement of the diagonals. So I have these four diagonals. Two of them are the same length, and two of them are this. There are two sets of these diagonals. So we can think of this as diagonal one plus diagonal two. Now since I have two of them, I just need to find out what this is plus this one here is, right, and double it. And that's going to get me the total measurement of the diagonals. So see if you can make sure this is diagonal one, that's diagonal two. I add these two parts up, right? I add this up plus this, oops. I add this up plus that up. Oop, didn't work, didn't want to happen. I didn't, I didn't close the, uh, the circuit there. I add those two portions of the diagonal up, and then that's like D1 plus D2, and then I multiply it because I got two diagonals. Well, when I'm thinking of diagonals, all right, I'm thinking of diagonals, and I'm given a box like this, I want to also think about if there are any, any triangles that are involved, like this triangle here, or this triangle here. This is really important because guess what? These are special triangles. I like these triangles. It's not that I'm a, uh, I like every shape. These triangles, uh, these triangles here are what we call right triangles. So we can, we can, we have a formula to find out the diagonals of those right triangles. And it, and in this problem, we should be thinking in terms of right triangles. This is a, you guessed it, a Pythagorean theorem problem. D1 is this measurement here. D2 is this measurement here. Now I've got to find out those. Well, what I have to do is I have to find out the measurement of this, and 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 then I can use a formula. So if I, I'm just going to fill this out right now real quick. I know that uh, if I'm thinking about this one right here, uh, uh, I'm just going to pick sides. It doesn't matter if it's exact. But anyways, this has got something Z and something Y, right? So I'm going to just say Z and Y. And this one right here, it has Y, because this is Y, this is Y, and it's got X. So I'll just say Y and X. Now, I'm going to use the classic formula for a right triangles, which is A, B, C. If I want to find this third side, I do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We call this the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem helps us find a missing side to a right triangle. It only works for right triangles. So if, it's a tri if you have a triangle and you do a one of the sides, A squared, the side that's connected to uh, the right triangle, and you, you square this and you square this, and it doesn't equal, the, the sum doesn't equal the square of C, then it's not a right triangle. But anyways, how would this work? Well, if A was 3 and B was 4, let's say, that would be like 3 squared plus 4 squared, that should equal whatever C squared is. 
Well, that would be 9 plus 16 equals c squared. So that would be 25 times c squared. I could think of c squared as the same as c times c. Well, what times itself gets 25? c would have to equal 5. So that's how I found out my missing side. We, when we do this problem, you know, we get up to this, if you follow these steps, you get up to this point here. Another color, please. You get z squared plus y squared equals whatever that c squared is. Why don't we just keep it at as d1 squared. But where do you go from here? Well, another way of visualizing this problem here is if, if I just do the square root of this, the square root of this, I'm left with d is equal to the square root of z squared plus y squared. And that would be the same thing for this one here. If we followed out all the steps, we would get um, the square root of y squared plus x squared equals d2. Now, I might have, I hope I didn't lose you here, but um, this supposedly, I know this is, this is very, very abstract right now. This supposedly is another way of expressing the diagonal using the Pythagorean theorem. So this equals d1, and this equals d2, so I add these together. And since I am, going back to this original one, doubling it because I got two sets of diagonals, I'm doing double the amount of whatever this plus this equal. The answer here is C. Um, here's one way we could have gotten to that faster. If I had picked up, if you and I and all of us had picked up on the clues that this was involving the Pythagorean theorem because it had diagonals, I sort of saw, it was in the geometry section, I sort of saw triangles. In dealing with the diagonals of triangles, I should be right automatically thinking of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And you know that this and this, a squared plus b squared, if you know that these two equations mean the same thing, so let me put a square there for the c. They're just different ways of working the equation but essentially they, they use the same information, then I might be looking very closely, very, very closely at my, an my answer choices and saying, which one of these answer choices has something like this? Well, a and B don't even come close. But if we look at C and D, they both have these elements in it. So why would I put C over D? Here's why. Because C talks about four sides. We're adding two of them, then we're doubling it. That's like adding these two parts. Whatever that sum is, double it to account for these ones here. So C represents four measurements. D represents a six-sided figure. We're not interested in a six-sided six -sided figure because we're only adding six parts of the diagonal. So that's another way to get to the answer C, another way to think about it. Okay, team, I hope you found this helpful.